Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. And we were having so much fun talking with each other, we thought we'd share you guys, you know, let you in on the fun as well. Anyway, <laughs> I want you to help me welcome Justin Chukari, Jamie King, and Christine Lee, the stars of Black Summer. Guys, welcome. How are you all doing? <laughs> I'm good. Welcome to all of you. And Christine says, y'all. <laughs> That's Me right. Too. That's right. Son from Black Summer says y'all. So just a little inside <laughs> tidbit. Uh, welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Just want to say congratulations on a absolutely fantastic season of Black Summer. You guys were just amazing. It, it was nonstop, 100 miles per hour from the first scene to the finale. So congratulations to all of you guys. It was amazing. Now, I want to start with Christine. Your character's son, uh, the survivor who got on the plane, seems to be the last person who has any bit of humanity left. Uh, I mean, let, let's just be honest. You were a prisoner 95% of the season. Bullets were whizzing by you. You are a survivor how does Sun manage to hold on to her humanity through all that while everyone else is killing each other? <laughs> um, I, I think it's actually what keeps her alive because, you know, if she had lost that humanity, she wouldn't have survived it. I don't think she would have had the will to survive. So, and, and also I think um, just needing that hope whether it's to just be alive or the potential of maybe meeting her mother um is what keeps her humanity even though yeah she she gets pretty much fucked over the whole entire season until the very last <laughs> that's put that's putting it mildly um do you uh <laughs> were you surprised that your character's son is probably one of the biggest fan favorites from the show. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, people care. Cool. <laughs> now, I've had a lot of people tell me that uh, compared to other post-apocalyptic shows, uh, Black Summer, they think, mirrors very closely what would actually happen, how humanity would just turn on each other. Starting, I want to ask this to all of you, but let's start with Jamie. What are your thoughts on that? That was always the intention. You know, it's really, this is an exploration of humanity and and how uh, human beings respond to uh, trauma, really. And especially in the second season, that was really the focus, you know, but it's always been that way. Um you know, I repeat this over and over again, but it's not about zombies, right? We no. don't talk about it like that. We don't approach it like that. It's that that no one is immune to um, one another and to human experience. And so, like, really, when John and I were first talking about the second season, it was about, like, okay, you know, what does commodity mean? You know, what does it mean where money doesn't matter it's food it's shelter it's 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 again very important basic needs mm -hmm. right yes and and you know how do people respond in a time of crisis and what does that look like and and we're seeing that now you know obviously through the pandemic and it, it was almost strangely prophetic um but it's it's never been about like, uh, as we've talked about before, it's never been about, you know, zombies. It's really like, if actually when I just said that word, it's interesting to me. It's like, what does it mean to fall back asleep? What does it mean to be a zombie? That's a good you know, point. and it's, it's, it's one that's not aware and, you know, and it's, and it's really an exploration of, of how, you know, one's character comes through in the in, in the most you know apocalyptic ways good point very good point justin how do you justify man killing man for absolutely no motive whatsoever except for 
the possibility of getting an extra scrap of food. I mean, I think people do crazy stuff when when uh, they are in survival mode. You know, I mean, most of us don't know what that's like. You know, but um, I I think basic instinct takes over. I don't think you know we can judge quite from our you know somewhat privileged existence of just you know having a grocery store and and plenty of food and shelter and all that but when all that is stripped away i think people get to very primal basic instincts and you know i think that's what this show is is trying to capture absolutely christine do you agree with that when civilization falls apart do we resort back to our basic survival instincts no matter what they are I think there's a yes and no to that question. I mean, I, I can definitely see, like Jamie said, you know, trauma and how that plays into the whole society. And uh, and also, you know, when people get anxious, they don't think logically. No. You know, I, I've heard. You know, I, I've had people respond to the show and they say, I just don't understand why this character would do this. But then when you're in a situation when you are so frightened that you can't think logically, you can't sit back and you have to make a move, then I think it's pretty natural that somebody might, you know. Yeah, resort to killing each a, other. Yeah, result in killing each other. Yeah. And, police trigger when it's not necessary now yeah. jamie i was i was really surprised on how dark rose's character turned this season now looking back that transformation started with the finale in season one okay and we talked about that the last time you were on uh, what did you think reading the script and basically uh rose's transformation to just killing and being well a, at least from the outside completely callous to it i mean for me you know i i'm in the writer's room you know so i i, I do a lot of uh dream work uh it's a very method way of acting mm -hmm. i would say Jane knows about this, but it's like, um, you know, I kept having like very specific dreams, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when we got the writer's room back up, like I kept hearing Rose is dead, like Rose is dead. And so I started studying, um, with Dr. Bessel van der Kork. Um, he wrote a beautiful book called the body keeps the score. And ultimately about like what, like really, what happens when a mother um, has to be a soldier and what happens to a mother whose child has to kill wow. and what are the repercussions of that? Um, I had a, like many dreams about um, like the shot where it was like uh, you're like it was m m me and Justin like in this reflection, right, of a of like a window, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and he has a military knife, right, and he's ch cutting off my hair, and then we were we would pull out, and it would be like this very American barber shop, right, yeah, and I kept having these dreams over and over and over again, and in in season one, I really wanted. Uh, I had dreams about that as well, but in a different way. So it was like, what is necessity? The idea of long hair in filmmaking or as a woman is something that um, keeps you sensitive and soft because, you know, to most human beings, uh, long hair is vulnerability. It, again, it's feminine, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I wanted to write something where Justin Spears um, was going to cut off my hair in the last episode of season one and then decided, no, this needs to be for season two. And it was very specific the way that it was done because 
like the way that my hair was cut, everything, it was like, okay, you know, it, it needs to be warm enough because we knew we were setting in winter. She's not going to be an idiot and Spears wouldn't be an idiot, right? Like, it, like the hair would need to cover the ears enough, right? Mm -hmm. That it would keep her warm. Wow. Um, but it had to be done in a way, like literally, like it had to be done in a way that Spears did it. Jess, I never told you about this. Um, so, you know, like my boy Ted, my hair got, like we cut it, you know, as if Spears had done it with a knife. Wow. Um, and, and, you know, I did a lot of like movement work about like, like, like Bashir, who's amazing, who's going to come on your show. Mm -hmm. You know, like the two of us are like the wackadoos. We're all wackadoos. That's why we love each other so much. Um, but, you know, like I really wanted to to represent what it means to go through, you know, um, this, 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 it's not just survival. It's so, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. It's a transformation. You know, it's so much, yeah, the transformation. And so like when people are like, Oh, you got this. You're good. You're good. You're good. I'm like, no, she's dead. Do you not understand that? And so Justin and I, like, like, like we know our relationship, right? Like we know just like Christine knows, like, like we all talk about this stuff. Like this is like, so we inform it because we, we discuss it in a way because that is so important to us, you know, like, so we inform the relationship not by a script, mm -hmm. but by our own interpersonal relationships, right? Because we're there's a kind of alchemy on this set, and you hear people all the time. They're like, "This set was so amazing." Blah blah. blah. It's like no, like that. Like our our cast and our crew, we have a kind of alchemy that I've never experienced in my life, and that's why we're we're able to strip away dialogue that's why we can throw the scripts on the the scripts on the floor it's like we're all dancing and waltzing together because we have each other's backs and hearts so hard like in like the like in a way that is truly like to me unprecedented wow now christine is that something rare to get that kind of chemistry on a set yeah, I think so. I, I just think just the way the set was run and the shots were designed um, was unique in my experience. I mean, obviously, this is the show where I've been on set the longest and a lot of other shows where, you know, I'm just told, hey, stand on this mark, do this line, and then we're going to flip it. And but um for this show it was not like that at all you know you show up on set you take in the environment and we just kind of talk about the backbone of the story and then we kind of sketch how it's gonna look and what we're gonna do on the spot which feels very much like theater except that we're filming and okay. it's a lot of dancing with each play on film <laughs> yeah yeah no it really felt like it and you know and also it's yeah and i have to say like the cast and crew are really amazing there was not one bad apple in in on set i feel like and that just is i don't know i'm i know i'm spoiled <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna walk up to another set and be like nothing why is it not like this why don't we have to love each other <laughs> yeah and if you are a bad apple if we get you just get the axe yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why kelsey got killed <laughs> but, yeah, what you say? So that's why Kelsey got killed. We just got him, got him. Got him. <laughs> love you, Kelsey, love you, Kelsey. Just kidding, we love you. Now, now Justin, uh, Spears yeah. had some of the most powerful moments throughout <laughs> season yeah. two, hands down. Uh, this question is: Why does he pick Anna? Uh, he's going out on his own terms, and he chooses Anna, Zoe Marlette, instead of Rose. Why? Right. Well, we've been talking about that backstory. Yeah, we've been talking about that. I mean, and that, that was a big discussion with John as well, uh, the, the showrunner um, and director of that episode, of well, most of the episodes. But, um, 
Yeah, you know, I think Spears, you know, when Spears and Rose are having that conversation, I think he can tell that she doesn't have it in her. You know, I think that she cares about him too much. I think she um, has let down her guard, maybe. Yeah, yeah, we talked a lot about this, that she is just not in the place and that he realizes that Zoe is you know the killer not the killer but she's the soldier she's the she's the one ready to do what's necessary to survive um and and make the tough call and so i think he realizes that that uh dynamic shift in their relationship and who's the stronger one and that's why and so he chooses zoe or uh anna (laughs) exactly and i actually see that in episode seven when anna says because you're dying and rose immediately goes anna like like she's offended you know, like right, you yeah, can yeah. see. Yeah. and I have gone through like a, a, a we went on a long walk, right? Like on a long walk to talk, and like it's like that's her father now. Yeah. You know, like that's her father. Spears was like the first one that like that really helped me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but doesn't that? And then uh, the first time I ever killed someone was when you had a bunch of cops, soldiers saying, "Oh, he's at this, at that, da, da, and blah." Like it was yeah. like, it was like it doesn't matter because there's this innate connection, right? Exactly. And, and and that scene, that scene, John, honestly, was so hard for me because I was watching Jay, like Justin. Sorry, I come to Jay was like fucking killing it in this scene, right? And then they went to do my coverage, and I was, like, so emotional. And you guys know what that's like, right? Like, when you feel everything, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't, like, shove it down. Yeah. And he's like, remember, like, he could have a gun under the And I'm like, I'm fucking this scene up, and I'm making, I'm, like, ashamed of myself. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, like, ruining the scene after just because like no but no that's real though that's real because we don't usually do we don't do like master over over in our in our scenes like chris was saying she like we we come to set we rehearse throw everything away and then thank god for wes who's the best camera op ever best just who's our other nice. greatest scene partner like we're doing stuff that's like bonkers bananas right so it was very purposeful this you know the last supper like this scene yeah you know where it's very strictly composed very still and when they went to go to do my coverage i am so emotionally attached to justin to christine to 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 they're not just my cast. This my family, yeah. right? It's my. It's like my family. So it's hard to discern, you know, in these moments for me, um, uh, my relationship. Uh, they're they're my family as friends. Mm-hmm. They're my family as cast members. They're my family uh, in in so many different ways. It's it's a very complex thing uh, uh, and so like spears like knowing that he was going to be gone inside of me jamie james like i it was like it was too it was like really too much for me to fucking handle I- and uh so like it was, i was trying to like shove like shove it down and johnny was like because I was getting like so tear it, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm totally screwing up the scene. I'm messing up the scene," because my inclination was to protect Justin. Yeah. Yeah. In real life, my inclination as Rose was to protect Spears. So I was like, the whole time I'm spir. I was. You guys know what that's like when you're spiraling out in a scene. You're like, oh, like. Ugh. It's hard. I can it's imagine. Like really hard. I can imagine. Yeah. Now, clear, Jamie was rocking it too. <laughs> what? Uh, to be clear, Jamie was rocking it too. 
Here. Yeah, I mean, guys, I like saw the episode seven yesterday. I think I sent the Snapchat to you, <laughs> but oh, it was so beautiful, you guys. It was. Damn. It was. I, it was really beautiful. Now, in the time that we don't see Justin, be, what do you think transpires between you and Anna? Now we see in the beginning of in the first couple of episodes when Anna does the trick to be led into that convenience store. She goes to the back, lets you guys in. You guys fist bump each other. So we know you guys developed this relationship in the missing four months that the viewers don't see. And I asked Zoe, what was her interpretation? How did she backfill that story of what happened between Spears and Anna? And she basically repeated what Jamie said, where Spears became like a surrogate father to her. Uh, Is that how you see it? How did you backfill the storyline between Anna and uh, Spears? Me? No, uh, Justin. Oh, um... Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, same thing. I mean, I think it was a pretty obvious track of like, you know, um, being together for four months and surviving. And I think Spears, it just as the only male in the group too, uh, would become protective over the young woman. And like you said, I, I'm glad you caught that, that little fist bump. Yeah. You know, I, think, I love that. Yeah. Because that yeah. was your thing, bro. Uh, it was such I a nice, it, yeah, uh, signifier. That yeah, little yeah, thing yeah. explains so much. Everything, yeah. Yeah, and I, I you know, because it wasn't in there, and I begged John to, I didn't have to beg him, but I asked him to put it in there, just because, just to have that little connection, you know, to show what our relationship, and it does say so much, you know, yeah. and, and. If I may, if I may say, the actors bring this to life, because we know the intent of the scene, and everyone here, like, thank God for Johnny and Netflix and everyone, like, like every person is bringing the story to life. So that fist bump is not something that's like in a writer's room being done. Like what Chris does, what Jay does, like what Zoe does, like that's, it's them. It's them. And it's just artists being allowed the space to be themselves and not just be themselves, but to dig in you know freely sorry yeah how to say that yeah no I'll, so you and, feel justin and, no, and, and, and yeah no go on go on continue oh, yeah. i just i just wanted uh i just want to show the relationship and that he's probably been teaching her teaching her how to use a gun teaching her how to you know yeah. scheme and you know use her to like um break, get those guys to let her in you know mm-hmm. that's clearly not the first time i've done that you know i feel I feel like he's been teaching her throughout these months of how to survive, you know? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what that little fist bump, even though it lasted a split second, it conveyed so much. Exactly. You're so amazing that you caught that. (laughs) Because we were talking about that fist bump. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, It meant a lot. Thank you. Thank you for seeing that. Yeah. Now, Christine, the majority of your scenes this season were with Bobby. And you mm-hmm. guys were phenomenal together. What you? What do you think? Uh, you were his prisoner for the majority of the season. And then we see where you step in to avoid these two groups from killing each other. And then he lets you go. He releases the handcuffs. What do you think at that point? You gave away half his guns. You would think he might be upset. But instead, he releases you. How do you explain that? I mean, I think, and we talked about this um, on the day. It's just that I, I think she, son, had, in a way, not a power over him, but it did influence him to show a little bit of more of that humanity that he once had, and mm-hmm. you've seen that side of him before he becomes the officer Nadiri. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think that's all there is, really. I think, like, that moment was just, uh, it's a powerful moment to show humanity. It was one of the most ballsiest thing that anyone could have done in that she earned respect. That's you, though. That's you, Chris. 
Thank you, Jamie. That's you. <laughs> now, to say that. now, Jamie, in the writer's room, how important, we did get to see Ray's uh, backstory, how it were in the beginning where he lost his family and all that. Why was that so important to give us Ray's backstory? I think that the back, well, first of all, Ray, like, we don't name characters. Uh, uh, he was the leader in the <laughs> script. <laughs> we don't name characters because I'm not really into that at all. Okay. okay. Uh, I find it very uh, much more efficient uh, and important to not give race, creed, color, circumstance, situation, ages, like casting. I don't. I don't want to say it's a white dude from this age to this age, and it's that this person. Like it's all. It's it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's always about the essence of the human being. I don't want male, female, they, they, like. Whatever it is, it's just like, let it be. So, with, repeat the question, oh, his backstory. Yeah, why was it important for, since you were in the writer's room, that we as the viewers, as opposed to any of the other new characters we met this year, we got that little bit of a backstory into Bobby? Um, I... I, I I feel like it's really important. Well, I know it's really important to explore the humanity of why people become who they become and how they respond to it. Um, I don't have a very good relationship with uh, authority, uh, especially cops. Um, and it's not that I dislike them or hate them. Um, it's just the, a, a systemic thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, but but out of my humanity, it's this is a cop that went through something and turned into something, right? It's the exploration of that because to relegate anyone into any category is to not be humane. And that's something that is really important to me as a filmmaker to explore. Um, and, oh my God, you know, you guys know me, I'm gonna get really emotional. Uh, like for Chris to be, you know, prisoner of war is us telling the truth. Like it's us telling the truth of an abuse of power um, and uh, Bobby's character you know like just trying to protect his family mm -hmm. and then that loss of that, that loss, that loss right and how it corrupts him and again it's about the exploration of how we respond to it you know, yeah. everyone did, like such a beautiful, a beautiful um, job of of understanding that. Yeah. You know, but like I cannot tell you how hard it was, how hard it was to see Chris like waving like fabric towards me. You know, and we have one shot, one shot to do that scene. Yeah. In the kitchen, you know, or like to like justin like like it's it's really emotional like i'm getting i'm, I'm gonna stop talking <laughs> i can totally feel your emotions i mean they're viral almost uh i can we are you're putting us in that position of what it was like uh seeing it writing it and actually acting it out so let's move on from that for now now justin uh, you were in one of the most phenomenal episodes, you and Bashir, uh, in the ah! woods. Ah! Uh, I mean, uh, 
Um, Zoe, that one was most, Zoe. That was her favorite episode. That was one of my favorite episodes. You oh, guys are we friends. That now moment yeah. in the in the window. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about Bashir and Justin right now. <laughs> but you and Bashir just rocked it. You guys are longtime friends. You go way back. Uh, what was it like? I don't want you know. We're gonna talk when you guys are together again here in two weeks. But what was it like working on set with such an old friend like Bashir and you guys had that amazing chemistry for that episode? I I mean, (laughs) it's like, uh, it's hard to explain it. It was such a full circle moment for us, you know? Um, You know, we've been friends for over a decade now. We met in an acting class, you know, uh, what our first acting class that we took in LA became fast friends and um, and I've taken so many acting classes together you know it was almost like we were always trading and like oh you be, are you in this class oh, I'm in this class you do this class you know I mean, but it's because of, I mean we became such good friends I mean I like to think we're both good people but then also I think we both have such a deep love for the craft and a nev- and a and a hunger to like continue to learn about the craft and uh and we both ended up in the actor's studio um, and just kept harnessing it. And we've done so many scenes together. Uh, and we also did like a three-man play um, that we won an NAACP. Awards. Yeah, we won an NAACP Theater Award where Mal- um, Bashir gave him an amazing performance as Malcolm X. Um, so, you know, it, it was just it's something you can't ever plan for or imagine. Like, you know, to get a episode where it's just you and one other person for an hour, I mean, that's rare in and of itself. Yes, yes. If if it ever happens, you know. And then to be able to do it with your best friend, I mean, you know, you, I, I don't even think my dreams were that big, <laughs> you know. Well, I've been looking and, at your post, and, and you shared some amazing photos on Instagram of you guys while you were shooting that episode. And you two looked like you had a blast. Oh, we they're so fucking cold. <laughs> oh, there's that. Yes, but despite the cold, we were still, you know, I mean, it was a, it was a truly, I mean, the epitome of a dream come true, and, um, and you know, and then to to be able to do the work, you know, I mean, Bashir's done a lot of stuff, but I don't think he's ever done something that showcases him his talent quite as well as this, and. Uh, um, it filled my heart to see him like watch him, especially that campfire. I, I mean, I, I know I know him so well. I know when he's locked in, and I'm like, oh, he's in it. He's bringing it, you know. And it was just, it was an amazing. It, it filled my heart so much to watch him, and you know. And then of course it raised my game, and we're just playing off each other, and we have such a shorthand of of working together that, uh, and you know, something we've been doing for many years now, and it was just an amazing thing that everybody can. It, See it, you know. It came right yeah. through on the screen. I wish I would have been there, like just watching it, because John was like, John and I were talking about you guys, and John was like, it was like watching acting Olympics. It <laughs> it was just like nonstop. Yes, yes. Them. It Imagine they just the kept talking. going, and I was like, man, I wish I was there. Just like, I mean, they wouldn't have called me on set, but I still was like, Chelsea, yo, COVID protocols. I just I was like, I'm like crying. Like, oh, yeah, baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that shit. And then, like, yo, who's this dude that comes on set and blah, 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 and da, 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 da. And he's like stepping over number two. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it was the customer. Cool the customer is like, oh, he's definitely from the actors who are like you. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's coming with the animal totem and a this and a that and a that. And okay. I was like, animal Ugh. like and the, it, they, and, you know, and the camera op was so confused Wes who's fucking like a genius he was he was like oh he, like every time Justin moves he goes faster <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want to tell like I didn't want to hit him up and be like yo like they're best friends and then he took like a tootsie roll like he want to eat this rabbit shit, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, he 
he pulled a Jay, prank on me on the first day. He was like, you know, I should save this for for when we do it, but I, we can tell it again. But he basically the part where he like it's like, oh man, yeah. you know, I like, I'm no expert, but I know fresh shit when I see yeah. it. You know, this is a rabbit. And and in the first take, he 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 smells it and he puts it in his mouth. And so I was like, yep, that's rat shit. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and the, the prop guy had told us, he was like, guys, now don't step in it because this is real rabbit shit. Oh, Wait, was it prop ghost? Yeah, and so I was, was looking it at him. Ghost, What's that? Was it prop ghost? What's the prop what? Ghost? Prop ghost? Was it prop ghost? She was asking I, if I, the prop was ghost. No, we have, we have, like, we have prop, okay. Another I, 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 no. Pop it was. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying right now, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, anyways, I was just looking at Bashir like, you know, I was almost mad at him. Like, yo, man, calm down. Like, shit in your mouth. Like, I know you like to go method, but damn, come on, Daniel Day Lewis, damn, that, you know, guys dedicated then, to his craft. What can you say? He's right. the fucking best. Yeah, and, and then everyone starts laughing at when they yell cut, and I thought they were laughing at him, but it turned out he, it was chocolate, and he told everyone to tell me it was it was real rabbit shit. <laughs> I know. I'm getting calls at the same time. Like, yo, this day, like, day player da, 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 is, like, stepping on number two, and I'm like, all good. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, and the other amazing thing was, especially that campfire scene. Well, the campfire scene and the and the last scene, you know, John, he he just did let us do it all in one take. So that campfire scene, which is I don't know, like maybe seven pages of dialogue. Yeah, every we More just let it do it from the beginning. A quarter. What's that? I think it's like eight and a quarter eight and a quarter and he just let us go from beginning to end which usually you chop that up you yeah. know what i mean go a couple pages at a time but we just went from beginning to end every take which was really allowed us to drop in and just made it feel you know like we were doing a play or something wow yeah wow now christine yeah. like we talked about son the only one to get on that plane uh we also see bobby giving his speech after he gets the living shit kicked out of him on how you people, you did this, all for what? An extra scrap? Did you like his performance? It was brilliant. Yeah. It was brilliant. Uh, do you think that part uh, is like a full redemption arc for Bobby and for you getting on that plane uh, does it show that you do not have to kill every person you come across to make it to safety? Uh, did you prove everyone wrong by, by you being the only one getting on that plane that everyone else out there killing each other, they were absolutely just nuts. They were killing each other for nothing. What do you think? Nothing was for nothing. Yeah, I... I I think so. I mean, I think the whole point of her being a prisoner for, you know, looking at, I mean, she was looking out for Spears or, and that's why she became a prisoner. And I think, I think a lot of people's initial reaction, if it had happened to someone they know, they would be like, well, that's what you get. You get you become a doormat for people yeah. and you're just going to lose out on the game. You got to play the game. But, um, you know, if you step away from the game, you just say, well, you know, who am, who do I become if I stop? But you could not I step away from the game. Pardon? You could not step away from the game. No, but then I, I think Sun played it by her own rules and then she eventually yes, got. Yes, but what I'm saying is like, yeah. We're handcuffed. So let's yeah. see, like talk about like the systemic thing, right? Like you were yeah, handcuffed. Yeah, but I think I think there's that moment when she even if she is handcuffed, she just still takes the initiative she to does. stop. She does. She does. Yeah. Which is so, so brilliant. But when that like <laughs> I just want to squeeze your face by the way. I'm <laughs> No, so no, Jamie, that card game in the mansion between you and Zoe, all right? That, uh, 
the camera paid real close attention, uh, more attention than you would normally see to that card game that you were playing with Anna. Now, uh, it made no sense, uh, even for the viewers trying to make sense of it. Was that actually a game or are we... It came from my dreams. Okay, so... I guess I have like this, right? Uh -huh. So I have a speed. Uh-huh. But was it a way of uh, secret communication no, between... No, like, for real. Then I got aces for Justin. Pocket full of aces. Wow. Mac Miller. And that is that before the... Uh... No, I just got this now. Okay, all right. So this was when I was 15. Okay, okay. But going... I kept having these dreams about card games, card game, like cards magic this that and i was like oh well sort of hand and um you know maybe that's a way for people like a new character to communicate like all like all that but then it then it, it then it was like johnny and i were like okay like people eat um like it was John and I really like as we do bright connect all the stuff. Um, I kept seeing the cards, and when I was fourteen, I saw someone with a zippo that had this the speed mm -hmm. right on yeah. a zippo, and I kept seeing it, and I was like, oh, that'd be really. Like in my dreams, I kept having these dreams, and I was like, "Oh, that'd be really dope for someone to, you know, maybe it's again a sleight of hand. It's a this, it's a that." And then I was like, "Oh, fuck!" So it it's wasn't a secret communication method between it's code between you yeah. and Anna? Exactly, but it took many weeks, many weeks, because me, I'm like. That would be a really amazing thing for another character. That would be like a uh, like a very interesting way for someone to communicate. Like, but it never is about me. Like to mm -hmm. me, it's not about me. It's not about me. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I just want to tell the story. So, so when it came down to that thing, like it the the card game, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, okay, it's Hayley meets this thing. So every episode is an homage to our favorite films okay all right i did not know that that's good information right there so uh you just said you know that card game it came from your dreams uh, let's move on i had a real big problem am i being too intense for you oh no 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 not at all and i have a question that uh john i love you so much <laughs> but i have to ask that because you guys know <laughs> what? Oh, Jamie goes. Jamie, yeah, we'll go Jamie in. Goes deep. Oh, I know She'll Jamie go. goes deep. I mean, there. Jamie. John knows it. Yeah, he we is, had a very. Me, we go hard. Yeah, me and Jamie had a very profound interview back last winter, and I told her it was one of the most deepest interviews I have ever done. Now I want to ask you, Jamie, why did Rose feel the need to have to kill Boone? She didn't, but. Why? The dude was not a threat. He was of no danger to you or Anna. But yet you were ready to to, to whack him. Why? Because that's my child. Yeah, but he wasn't a danger to Anna. How do I know that? Well, he's unarmed. You guys are armed. No, no, no. No, unarmed does not matter. Like, unarmed does not matter. Like, that's my child, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know this dude. I don't, I don't know him. Okay. I mean, I'm a parent too. I can understand that. I know. I know. So let's, like, it's about being real about that. Like, some dude comes in, like, and, and, and he's so, he's such a fucking gifted actor. Like, but for real, like. I don't know you, bro. Yeah. I don't know you. 
Yeah, it's still I it's I, I had a hard time. I had a hard I don't time. Know you. Yeah, I you think it's also walking you know, these two through. women, and like when there's a, it I I think for me when I saw that it was more like um. You know, when the guy gives a weird vibe, mm -hmm. women just immediately put the guard up yeah. and we're like, okay, something's about to happen if I don't, if I don't show them my weapon or if I don't show them I am not interested, if I don't show them that there will be no BS here, something will happen. And I think that's one of the, I, that's how I saw it. I mean. Exactly. And also that moment is when uh, Anna, Zoe, came into her own. She, for the first time in the season, she stopped you, you know? Up to that point, she was following your every move, uh, everything. It was that moment where Anna sort of came into her own, stepped up to you and said, Mom, you don't have to kill him. He could still show us. He could still know something. He can help us. And you didn't kill him. That it was so hard. I can imagine. I can imagine it was very difficult. No, like, like, imagine you're, like, we're, like, rewriting, right? Like, we're rewriting everything, you know? Yeah. And it's not just about, like, it's not just about the show. It's not just about the show. It's about what we're going through as human beings. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. Right? Yeah. So it's like we're getting visas and this and that and then having a call. You know, we had the first seven, seven visas from the prime minister. Like, it's like fucking really intense. And then you have to say, oh. You have to leave your family. Like, you have to leave. You have to leave your family. And then come to this country. It's an elephant on a stake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like, and we're the first fucking production. I will say fucking, because I will. We are. Oh, side note. Do you know the, the, the. No, I'm gonna go there. Jay, you know. Okay. Um, we were the first production to make it through COVID clean. No sickness. In our industry. No sickness. End of story, period. That's awesome. That's hats off, hats off to you guys, uh, to the great work you did shooting this and keeping everybody safe at the same time. Now, it was hard i can imagine i've spoken to so many uh filmmakers actors that have had to film under covid and the restrictions uh you guys have to work I under good. uh i understand how difficult it must have been uh and to have somebody go through an entire season and not a single person get sick really says a lot now justin when did you find out that spears's time was coming to an end oh man uh, I would, you know, we were originally supposed to start shooting in February of 2020, and um, and so the October, so I guess that was October 2019. Mm -hmm. John called me and, and wanted to tell me about the arc of the season, and he was like, "Well, buddy, Spears is gonna need his maker." <laughs> so that, I, that was quote unquote exactly how he told me, but um, you know, but he he. He justified it and, and kind of told me that, you know, um, he really wanted, actually, he was very sweet about it. He was like, look, he was like, I don't film things like we're going to get another season. Nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. And he was like, I really want to have a like, day one. And um, yeah, so he just, he, he was just like, so we're, we're going to give you the full arc this season. <laughs> Did you uh, uh, have a say into how Spears goes out? Uh, I was, was surprised as, as the viewers watching. Okay. You know? um, and then I was more intense reading it, you know? And I, I mean, I knew it was coming, 
and I was like anticipating it. And then um, to read that, I, you know, the, the whole scene between me and and uh, Anna or Spears and Anna was like, oh. I just. So, I mean, I so thought it was. I was very. Yeah. Too. Wow, that's like <laughs> the darkest thing I could think of. Exactly. You know? I thought it was a beautiful ending to a great character. Now, uh, Christine. No. Lo- of course, can I say something? Sure. Of course, you have to say. Of course. <laughs> of course, yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> everything that he did he had to say like this is not like Tony or me or all Netflix or whatever it's like it's like it's it's the actors it's crafty it's the grips it's the crew it's a, it's it's everyone like it's everyone that's great that everyone has a say uh it makes it makes it everybody makes everyone feel more involved in what's going on uh now christine jamie said earlier that this show uh it's not about the dialogue the action itself dictates the show's uh storyline uh do you think that's a big um reason why your character son is so popular like jamie said earlier you know, you can throw the script away and it's all on the action and the movements and the language we don't understand. Uh, do you attribute that to how popular Sun became? Um, I mean, I mean, to this day, I still don't know why Sun is the Sun is a, a popular character. Because uh, you're I, amazing. You're you. a dope actor. Come thank on, let's be real. I don't understand it either, Christine. I really don't. <laughs> Christine, Christine, you suck. <laughs> no, so I know. We try to put it to black and white. We're like, can we make it black and white? So like, you said no subtitles. Like, yeah. Who said no <laughs> subtitles? Tommy and I. Okay, okay. And then we try to put yeah, it to a black and white version and then a color version. So, uh, continue. <laughs> no, I, I think there's a, I, I think obviously there's a universal language to it. And I think um, maybe that's why Sun has uh, a lot of response from people who aren't English speaking audience as well. Uh-huh. Because, you know, in a way, sometimes dialogue can be a barrier when two yeah. people want to connect um, because either people don't know how to express themselves with words properly or they lie or or whatever reason is. Yeah. And because Sun doesn't have that barrier, what you see is who she truly is. Um, I think that's why maybe people can connect to her. Um, you really but, are yeah, baffled that's... as to why your character is so popular, aren't you? Because she's real. Exactly. Because yeah, but Christine, I don't think Christine understands that. She's honest. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know, this, I don't know, guys. Anything, anything. But that's the thing. Like, as so an actor, I watch you guys, and I'm like, wow, that's that's dope. Like, oh my god, wow, that was that was just truthful moment right there. But then when I watch myself, I'm like, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. No. I don't buy it. You know, Jamie, yes. yes. What we're finding, yes. Anna, yes. Zoe, yes. But me, I don't buy it. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, but, but also, um, you know, your character is the only person who's who doesn't give in to the corruption in the whole series. Everybody, including Anna, you know, yeah. is often people left and right as they see fit as they need to and you're the only one who basically hasn't given into the dark side exactly you know? spears is shot you're surrounded what do you do you push him into the ditch to save if he's alive to give him a chance you know it's actions like that that how we started this show and i told you you're the last person the last character on the show 
who seems to show any humanity left. Now, Jamie, why is Rose so afraid to tell Anna that there is no safe place left in the world? Because we know you think it. Why do you why do you think Rose is so afraid to tell her daughter the truth that there you know what honey there really is no safe place anymore You okay We can't hear you we lost audio It's oh. very real Okay And um well, I understand um uh, and I understand the emotions that you're probably feeling right now. Uh, is that it has to go back to that place, right? That could go back to it. It's not. It's not. People think that actors are playing at something. They think that they're playing someone, but it's it's a merging of themselves with the character. Yeah. Right. And so it's like being in war and then coming back as a civilian and people don't get it. PTSD. Yes. Which is what this show is about. Exactly. So how do you explain why is Rose uh, afraid to be honest with her daughter? She is honest with her daughter. So you think Rose believes it as well, that there is still a safe She's place? She's honest in terms of the discipline, right? Of how do we protect ourselves? Yeah. She's tactical. She is clear. And yet there's still the ordinariness of, okay, you know, like there's still the... The, the honesty of what it means for a child and a mother to, like, she's still a teen, like, growing up. So it's the ordinariness meeting the extraordinariness. Okay. Okay. I get It's you. capturing all of it. Mm-hmm. All of it, you know? I... And, you know. Jamie, you are a phenomenal actress. Just to see how much of yourself you put into every role is something really special. And I think that's what makes you such a great actress. And same for you, Thank Justin. You. Same for you, Christine. And I hope one day you really appreciate and understand how your character is just so loved on the show. <laughs> and there will be a season three of uh, Black Summer. If there isn't, then this we know this yeah there were there this, we know this. yeah and there will acts. be a there will be a three se a season three and uh man like i told you in the pre-call justin spears yeah. will always be fly uh, you will uh, always be fly bro you will uh, always be fly so i love that line Come on, <laughs> jamie don't you love that line justin is one of the Fucking best actors I've worked with in my entire yes. fucking life. And he no, for real though, I worked. He's with okay. Him. He's fine. I, He's okay. Yeah, yeah. You He's laid like, it all like, you out there. You man. laid it all out there, man. You didn't leave anything behind. You put it all on the table. And I mean, I, words can't really. I mean, there are no more words I can accurately describe it. All of you, all three of you did an amazing job i can't wait to see what season three has to bring i want to thank all of you guys for doing this uh to have you three here talking to you i've gotten messages from friends family uh, i've gotten people who started binge watching black summer uh, uh a week ago and they're like holy shit, how have i not watched this sooner you know what i mean so you guys brought it you brought it to the show. You brought it tonight. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Um, it's my pleasure. You. You're brilliant. And we're, we're so thankful to be on your show. And I'm thankful really? to have you on my show. And Jamie, tune in in two weeks when I have Justin and Bashir on. And Christine as well. That should be something to watch. 
when I have those two on. Oh, <laughs> oh man. You won't, like, get a word 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 and, do. you won't get a word in right. those two. We'll just, extra, I'll just sit back. I'll just sit back and just. <laughs> just just have like a topic of the day. Yeah. Give me hard because I'm not going to be like on the call. So I can't like chime in. <laughs> <laughs> can we make that a, uh, John, can we make that a whiskey night? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. John. Yeah. What the fuck, for real though? Because I know like Mike, we're doing this whole thing. Like. But, uh, yeah, okay, okay, uh, okay, all right. Thank you guys so much for doing this. We're going to do it again. Until next time, uh, be well, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We had a nice, large crowd tonight. So, well, just stay safe and always stay walking, guys. Good night. Bye-bye. On behalf thank of you. Justin, thank Jamie, you. and Christine. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. We love you. Bye-bye.